In the late 1970s, Boeing commercial airplanes determined it needed a new wide-body airliner to complement the Boeing 747 in its commercial lineup. Boeing believed it was time for a more efficient wide-body twin-engine long-range aircraft to enter the market. And so, the Boeing 767 program was born out of this desire. The prototype of the 767 took to the skies on September 26, 1981, just four years after the aircraft was introduced to the public as the 7X7. By August 1982, the aircraft had received type certification from the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, and would soon go on to enter commercial service on September 8 of that year, first flying with United Airlines. With over 1,300 Boeing 767s rolling out of the manufacturer's factories over the years, and with cargo variants still in production, the program is undeniably one of the company's largest commercial successes. Over the years, Boeing has modified its design many times. It all began with the 767-200, but this was quickly followed by the extended range 767-200ER just a couple of years later. More variants would appear in the following years. So let's take a look at all of them for today's video. As noted earlier, the Boeing 767-200 entered service in 1982. This base platform was marketed with a two-class passenger capacity of 214. Its maximum takeoff weight, or MTOW, is 315,000 pounds, while its maximum range is listed as 3,900 nautical miles. Entering service with United Airlines in 1982, it was primarily used for domestic routes within the United States before becoming the first twin-engine aircraft certified for transatlantic flights in 1985. 128-200 aircraft were delivered to customers over the years, although many were eventually converted to freighter variants. The 767-200 ended production in 1987, as airlines began to heavily favor the more capable extended-range 767-200ER. The original 767-200s, which were converted to freighters, continued to fly. Notably, Israel Aerospace Industries, or IAI, has performed many conversions of 767-200s to become 767-200SFs over the years. Next on our list is the aforementioned Boeing 767-200ER, which was originally introduced in 1984. As its fuselage is sized identically to the base-200, its average two-class passenger capacity is also 214. Maximum takeoff weight, however, is higher, at 395,000 pounds. Able to carry more fuel than the Dash 200, the maximum range of the Dash 200 ER is listed as 6,590 nautical miles. Israeli flag carrier El Al was the launch customer for this variant. In 1988, the aircraft set a distance record for a twin-engine aircraft by flying non-stop across the Atlantic. The aircraft was popular among international operators, many of whom kept the jet in service for decades before turning to newer 767 variants. In total, 121 767-200ER aircraft were delivered according to Boeing, and the aircraft remains in service with some charter operators today. Third on our list is the base Boeing 767-300, which was introduced in 1986. With a longer fuselage than the Dash 200, its average two-class passenger capacity is set at 261, while its maximum takeoff weight is 350,000 pounds. The maximum published range for this aircraft is 3,900 nautical miles. The Dash 300 entered service with Japan Airlines. Commonality with existing 767 variants was appealing to airlines who were already operating the Dash 200. The aircraft was primarily used for high-capacity routes within Europe, Asia and North America, and a total of 104 aircraft were delivered over the years. Production ended in 2000, and a single 767-300 remains in passenger service today with Asiana Airlines, at least according to South Korean news outlet Kuki News. Planespotters.net data shows that this airframe has registration Hotel Lima 7528 
and is nearly 27 years old. A quick check of Flight Radar 24 data shows that the aircraft has been flying exclusively between Seoul Gimpo Airport and the leisure destination of Jeju in South Korea. Again, like the Dash 200, many Dash 300s have since been converted to freighters. Fourth on the list is the Boeing 767-300ER, which was introduced in 1988 with launch customer American Airlines. With an average two-class passenger capacity of 261, the aircraft's maximum takeoff weight is listed as 412,000 pounds. Its maximum range is 5,980 nautical miles. The aircraft would eventually become the most popular variant of the family, and by 2017, over 580 had been delivered. Today, hundreds remain in service with operators. The following carriers are but just a few examples of airlines still holding on to their Dash 300 ERs. Delta Airlines, United Airlines, Japan Airlines, and all Nippon Airways. Historically, American Airlines operated a sizable fleet but retired the last of its 767-300ERs due to the pandemic. British Airways was also a large operator of the aircraft, as was Australian airline Qantas. Both of these carriers had ended 767 operations long before the pandemic. Interestingly, Canadian airline WestJet acquired a few old Dash 300ERs from Qantas. Before airframes flew transatlantic to London from various Canadian cities, and was a way for the carrier to try out long-haul wide-body operations. After proving to itself that it could indeed pull off such operations, it would go on to order the Boeing 7879. With an impressive combination of range and passenger capacity, the aircraft has become a favourite for long-haul operators across the globe. The aircraft effectively competed with the Airbus A330 and managed to make the Boeing 767 family a long-term financial success. And then, finally, the last passenger variant is the Boeing 767-400ER. This aircraft was introduced in 2000 and has an average two-class passenger capacity of 296. Its maximum takeoff weight is 450,000 pounds, while its maximum range is 5,625 nautical miles. As should be quite obvious, it's the largest variant of the family, with a fuselage that was stretched over 40 feet from the original 767-200. In a high-density layout, the 767-400ER could accommodate over 300 passengers and featured raked wingtips instead of winglets. Despite its lower range in comparison to the 767-300ER, the aircraft still has a place in the operations of some carriers today, particularly for long-haul transatlantic and intercontinental travel. In total, 37 767-400ER aircraft were delivered to just two customers, Delta Airlines and United Airlines. United is listed as operating 16, while Delta operates 21. So, those are the five passenger variants of the 767 that made it to market. We should mention, as a bit of a footnote, that Boeing had tried to offer the 767-400ERX. This derivative would be the same size as the 767-400ER, but have more range than the 767-300ER. Boeing at the time highlighted that such capability would provide the ideal replacement for DC-1030 ERs and the capacity needed for markets that have grown beyond the 767-300ER. The Dash 400ERX would have featured an MTOW of £465,000 with a range of more than 6,150 nautical miles, an increase of more than 525 nautical miles over the 767-400ER. In early March 2000, Kenya Airways committed to the 767-400ERX with an order for three airplanes. Unfortunately, with little interest from other airlines, Boeing scrapped the ERX. Kenya Airways went on to operate the 777-200 instead. What are your thoughts on the Boeing 767 family of aircraft? Which variants did you get a chance to fly on? Share your experiences by leaving a comment.
Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.